What matters most to you at the end of life? The Conversation Project is an initiative that aims to facilitate open dialogue with loved ones so that our wishes about support and health care can be understood and respected. On this episode of Looking Forward with our Senior Centers, Julie Thompson sat down with local Senior Center directors and end-of-life educator and family support specialist Cheryl Bottieri to learn more. I am so happy to welcome our panel today. We are joined by Michelle Browdy, who is the director of the Plymouth Elder Services and the Center for Active Living, and you're also the chair of the Plymouth Senior Task Force. Yes. Okay. We also have Joanne Moore. Joanne is the director of Duxbury Senior Center and the co-chair of the Plymouth Senior Task Force. Welcome. Thank you so much for having and me today. You're very welcome. And our special guest is Cheryl Bottieri, who is an end-of-life educator and family support specialist, and also a member of the Plymouth Senior Task Force. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us for this very special and very important discussion today. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put the first question to you, Cheryl. What is National Healthcare Decisions Day, which is what we're gonna talk about today, and mm -hmm. why is it important? Well, National Healthcare Decisions Day is a day that happens every year on April 16th. And the reason behind it is because the one thing that you can always count on is death and taxes, so it's always after tax day. So a little humor there, but really a, a serious topic, but a prompt for people to really think about healthcare decisions. Okay. And so I've had the good fortune to work with Michelle and now Joanne at the senior centers to really every year think about how might we help people to learn more about healthcare decisions, mm -hmm. because every single person gets to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. And yes, you want to have discussions and conversations with your healthcare team, with your family, family of origin, family of choice, friends. Um, so every year we, we celebrate that and we have kind of a community campaign. And then over the course of April, May, June, we slide in some other types of workshops and webinars and opportunities to really kind of look at things a little bit more tactically. But for me, as an end-of-life educator and family educator, to get people comfortable mm -hmm. about having some of these conversations. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about some tools and we talk about some of the ways that you might start these conversations. So it's really a way to begin. Okay. So it's called Healthcare Decisions Day. National Healthcare right. Decisions okay. Day. So is it more than just healthcare decisions? And what healthcare decisions are you referring to? For this spe specific topic, this day, it starts with healthcare. Okay. But as we're going to talk a lot about today, there's so many things that underpin that, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, that's there's healthcare decisions. There's advanced care planning and directives. Mm -hmm. Um, my daughter's a social worker, and so she, in class, she works with children, and she told me a story about how all these children were in the river, so we were helping to save them, the social workers, helping, helping. Finally, one got up and said, who the heck's throwing them? We got to go, some of us, upriver to figure this out. That's what I look at National Healthcare Decisions mm -hmm. Day and talking about these things. So it's a, it's a point to let's do this before a crisis happens. Yeah. And so as an educator, getting folks to, to learn and be aware of what their choices are so that they can think about those things and we can talk a little bit more about it, but yeah. Okay, so what can you do? What, what can an individual do to start this whole process? Where do you begin? Number one, with yourself. Okay, so right? talk about that. So I say that I work with folks to live well, age well, and die well. Okay. I have my own practice called Aging with Grit, Grace, and Dignity, and that is my wish for everyone, is that they get to age well and live well and die well. So it really, you, you want to start with yourself. What, what are your wishes, right? And, and so based on your family history, based on your medical history, but we're going to talk a little bit about where do you want to age well and live well and die well, mm -hmm. because 100% of us are going to die. Mm -hmm. A <laughs> hundred percent of the people that you know, hundred percent guarantee. Right. There's not many things that you can say it's a hundred percent, but if we learn what those choices could be, right. and by talking like we are today, people are going to watch this show and they're going to think, 
hmm, do I want to stay in Plymouth? Hmm, what are the services? That's what we're working on with the sure. senior task force, right? What are some of the things that I might have to do to improve the chances that I can stay in this community? Maybe it's not your exact house. Maybe you need a smaller house or you need to modify your home. These are all the things the senior task force is really looking for right. and, and to help folks and to learn what is needed in this community and the surrounding communities. So when you start this, you can start as probably as early as 18 because you're a legal adult at 18, right? You can start by being an organ donor on your license, right? Is that There's like is that all like all basic steps? It's basic steps, right? But it's to really kind of sit with, what if today was my last day? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What if I got the news that yeah. I have a year? Like, no matter what age, those conversations happen. Families that I'm working with right now, it can be a young mom at 43 with pancreatic cancer, or it can be someone 54 with colon cancer or somebody that's older and is starting to think, I'm by myself, can I stay in this community? Okay, that's a great, that's a great lead into um, the discussion. Michelle, let me ask you a question. Sure. Where do people want to live and age well? And how is Plymouth and the COA in general working to help people age in place? And can you define age in place for me? I can do all of those things. Great, <laughs> that was a mouthful, so go. So as Cheryl mentioned, and you've been gracious enough to have me on and us on in terms of, of talking about this, Plymouth is tackling this issue and really looking at how we can assist our residents by, doing, by forming the Senior Task Force. And out of the Senior Task Force, we are determined as a community to become an age and dementia friendly designated community. It's so important. And it's, it's such a broad topic, but it's really important to your point, people want to age in place. When people think about aging in place, people think about elders, mm. right? I did. Age yeah. in place might mean how am I going to keep my mom or my dad or my sister or my best friend in their home or transition them to a home that makes more sense, as Cheryl said, downsize. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the whole community, the age and dementia friendly movement, the lifelong conversations, if you were told tomorrow at 30, you had a year, the community is about aging as a whole. Mm -hmm. So for the high school, the college graduate who loves their town, they love Plymouth, they met the person of their dreams, they wanna start a family here, or they wanna put down roots in Plymouth, mm -hmm. that's aging in place. The place they want to be, can they successfully age? Will the young person find a, a professional opportunities? Will the young person find affordable housing? We think of affordable housing, we think of senior housing. No, we all need affordable housing, whether that's a new mortgage, an apartment, a condo, what have you. Can we survive and raise a family here? What are the schools like? Is our community supporting our desire to age and put down roots in Plymouth? Mm -hmm. Of course it involves elders. Naturally it does, for the reasons I said, but as a full community, it's everybody. It's the whole life cycle. It's the whole life cycle. Yeah, so that's how we have to look at it, the yes. whole life cycle. And what, what specifically has the uh, Plymouth, has Cal done um, to, to start this process in Plymouth? What haven't we done? <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that answer. Go ahead. So it, in seriousness, the Senior Task Force yeah. is, is a, a huge catalyst for this. We don't want to just assume, because we run a senior center, that we know what seniors and or residents want. Mm -hmm. We want to hear directly from the people in our community. So we have the Senior Task Force to look at aging across the lifespan and to hear directly from our residents. That's step one. We've, we've you know, hired UMass Boston. They're renowned in their field for getting this out of communities. Mm -hmm. We have community forums. We want to hear the voice of people of all ages to determine what we should do. And then the COA itself, you know, we do these conversations. We have wonderful people like Cheryl who come to us and say, hey, we can do this better. And we buy into that because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. We collaborate. Duxbury and Plymouth All do so many things together mm. because it just supports our communities. 
let's let's talk about Duxbury for a minute. Joanne, um, obviously Plymouth isn't the only town that, that mm -hmm. or the COA that's focused on these issues. Sure. So can you talk a little about what's happening in Duxbury and then what's happening across the state in general? Sure. So we are also doing the age and dementia friendly process. Our survey has just been complete and so thankful we had over 1,500 responses of people of all ages and um, really are pleased with the results. Um, the top four results ended up being housing, and I won't mm -hmm. be surprised if the, they're similar in Plymouth, transportation, mental health, and communication. So um, what we're doing is actually at our board meeting tomorrow, um, our board will recommend that a, a formal task force from our welcoming committee, which is a subcommittee of our long range plan committee, um, be made a formal committee like Plymouth. Mm -hmm. um, it will be brought forth to the select board and then our work with um, OCPC will begin um, to really flush out those topics, meet with experts, and then a final report will be shared with the select board and the town manager, hopefully in late fall. So that's what's happening in Duxbury. What's OCPC? Old Colony Planning Council. Okay. So like um, UMass Gerontology, we're working with a regional planning agency. Um, they helped us do our survey, get the results, and they'll work with experts on the South Shore and in Massachusetts to help us move to the next level. Okay. Um, let's go back to you for a second, Cheryl. And, and what is anything we need to fill in um, from what they've said before we go on to more questions? No, I think that this is just a really great example of how each community, right, tries to find out what are the differences, mm -hmm. what are the things that they need to perhaps work on, what are the support, the services, um, because each is each town's so unique. Right, so um, different. So you've talked about um, kind of the lifespan of, of people making their plans to, to be able to stay wherever they want to stay for most of their lives. So, and, and you are an end of life specialist really. So mm -hmm. you, do you deal more with those families and those situations that have to face that? Um, they're at that critical point. Or do you deal with everybody and say we have to make our end of life plans starting right when you're young? So I kind of have my work in two different directions. Yeah. Um, kind of like that story I told, right? I, I love to do community education so that we're starting before to start putting these thoughts in people's mind that I should maybe start thinking about this now. I would say that almost everyone has a story of someone that perhaps got the call that there's a sudden illness or an accident. My husband, as chief of police in this town, for many years, we would get the call that came in the middle of the night. And so I would know that a very difficult visit was happening. Yeah. And it didn't matter what age, right? And so that's where helping people to start to think about this. So the community education apart, the raising awareness mm -hmm. of this. For a town to be taking on this age and dementia friendly is so progressive and, and just really so important so that as we're having these community forums and we're getting all this information out there, we can see where the gaps in services are, mm -hmm. right? And, and there are some. We've already identified quite a few just on our senior task force and really around end of life planning and family caregiving right. because that is a huge underpinning. How do you stay in your community right. if you need services because you have a serious illness, an accident, or a disability? Right. So that's where we're working together on the senior task force, but also within the community in my line of work right. is to really provide education yep. and then work with individuals and families. Right. So, so that the education we can help part mm -hmm. is, I would think, is, tell me if this is, if I say this wrong, is a little bit easier because you're dealing with an overall broad subject. You're dealing with, these are all the things you should, you should be thinking about now for planning for your future where we don't have a crisis yet. And then there's the other end of that where we're getting to the point where dad and mom can't be here anymore or, or it's where they're going to fall they're going to have an accident I'm scared for them mm -hmm. or uh, we just got the call that um, you have a terminal illness so that's a whole different perspective that you have to bring to this and it seems to me that you're 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 encompassing all of this mm -hmm. yes. in your in your data and in your and what do you what do you hope to pull out of this in the end as an action plan 
for everybody, whether you're 18 or you're 88? What, is, what are the action plans going to be? I think for, for Plymouth or, or any community, the action plan is at the end of the day, whatever age you are and whatever everyone's going to face, crises, yeah. barriers, uh, whether it's financial, whether it's health, whether it's support, you want a community mm -hmm. that has resources in it that can A, help you maybe directly, that would be the perfect world, right. or at least B, is an opportunity to say, Plymouth supports me. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. know that if I turn to blank, mm -hmm. if I call blank, oh, there's this in Plymouth, they will direct and guide me to the resources I need while I'm going through this difficult time. Mm -hmm. That's a great community. That's the end game. Okay, great. And I was going to say, across the state, 125 senior centers and towns are working on this age and dementia friendly process. Mm -hmm. So that's about a third of them. Um, there's 351 towns in the Commonwealth and 350 have councils on aging. So we are a really important mm -hmm. resource in the community. We're the first door you should come in. If you have a question, if you have a concern, if you're becoming a senior or not quite yet a senior, but you want to get engaged and be part of the community, we're the door you should come through. Mm -hmm. um, we provide education and recreation and exercise and social, um, but it's way more than that. If you have a question, call us. We're here. We'll have the answer. And if we don't have the answer, we'll find the answer. Um, so our, our job is to help the community stay strong. Like Michelle said, um, we're an important resource. And we really want everyone to know that. A lot of times, um, I don't know if you hear it in Plymouth, do people live there? I hear a yes. lot and I say no, but come on in. And um, we are a town department, um, like the fire department, like the police department. We're emergency management. We're there to help and you know guide and provide support to community members. Mm -hmm. And that's not just a 60 year old and over. Right. It is the family caregiver. It is someone taking care of their grandma. It might be your next door neighbor. Um, we're just a phone call away. I think that's really important. To and know. that's a really important distinction to make because people yeah. don't view themselves as I'm part of this population. Right. And they should because if they are responsible for, uh, for taking care or, or even coordinating the care for mm -hmm. someone, it's not always easy. No. And it's not always inexpensive and it's not always possible. If I could say, to Joanne's point, fit maybe 50 50, but it's more rare we get a call directly from a senior recognizing that they might need some assistance. <laughs> yeah. It's more often their, their, their mm -hmm. child yep. or their neighbor mm -hmm. or their sister mm -hmm. or their loved one. Mm -hmm. So it is the age, you know, it, yeah. it is across the board yeah. people calling of different ages. You want to add to this? I just, you know, when you look at all of the different things that people face with a serious illness or aging. Um, there are so many services, but it's still really hard to navigate. Mm. As a family care caregiver right now, um, and I've been one for a number of years for my mom and my stepdad, it's still hard to navigate. Mm. And so that's what we're trying to see with the Senior Task Force. Uh, where are these gaps? What are the barriers for people? And what we're really finding is family caregiving and getting help, especially in the Plymouth community, it's really very difficult right now. There's a six week to 12 week wait period for home health aid or right. home personal aid. And so having a mom in the hospital and then to rehab and then trying to bring them home is a very long and difficult process. Right. And so that's why the education of this is so important as well, because you don't have that, that roadmap. Right. Right. And so the more we can have programs, whether it be at the Councils on Aging, the libraries, mm -hmm. right, try, at, the, at the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. to try to say this day is going to come mm. for all of us, mm -hmm. whether it be an accident, a serious illness. I'm not just talking about death. And I think that's one of the things... Um, I've been very bold about is saying this is about dying mm. so you can live well. 
so you can age well. Yeah. Because that is probably one of the hardest barriers. I was just at the Chamber event a couple of weeks ago, and whenever I would bring up, you know, I have 100% guarantee for you. You do? Mm -hmm. Yes. We are all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and my kids are like, ooh, that's a little harsh, Mom. And I said, I have to be bold right. because that's what I want people to really think about right. so they can live well. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very hard to admit you need help, right? Mm -hmm. That you might not know who to go to. Mm -hmm. And that's why I do love the Councils on Aging. First call. Yeah. Um, but then what? And so that's what we're working to provide programs. We had a wonderful program that Norwell um, Council on Aging did. Live well, age well. And every other week, it was a different panel. Mm -hmm. Financial, legal, health care, end of life. <laughs> and that's really, I think, that what newbies to this that, that haven't even thought about this yet really need to understand that there's, there's different components of this. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and almost having a, a list. Where's my checklist? What should I do? And, and it's, it's different, like you said, it's different for everyone. This, this length of time that we have to wait before we can get help for, uh, whether it's home health or, or into a facility for rehab, it's, I mean, I've, I've gone through this with my family recently, and it's, it's a nightmare. And if, you're, if everybody in the family works full time, it's, it's, it, it, that causes a challenge. If there's no um, insurance that's paying for this, it's a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, and all these things, I'm sure, sometimes it's easier to just say, I'll just, you know. I'll, but I'll. when you're in crisis, <laughs> right. you, you can't don't do that. have as much time exactly. to do this groundwork. And right. so uh, helping a family member right now with just travel arrangements for four-day-a-week um, treatment, yeah. okay, person is working, right? Yeah. The, Oh my goodness, yes, there's bits and pieces of help, but when you have to put a four day a week schedule together mm. for six weeks, it is daunting. Right. It is daunting. Right. And so this is just what we're kind of, you know, scraping yep, at the, the top of the iceberg right. of this, and that's why we want to dig deep within the town and say, where, right. where are the gaps? Right. Where are the services? Where's the education yep. that's needed so that folks, when they do hit one of these, problems, challenges, they there's, know they have support. There's, right, there's more. And there's support that not only has the, the desire to help, but now has resources to help. And, and I, uh, is that the bottom line, is well, getting the resources? Well, I was just thinking, not just having the resources, having the conversation before the crisis. Mm -hmm. So, you know what, let's get these documents filled out. Let's know where they are. <laughs> Because that's really mm -hmm. important. Make sure your doctor has a copy, your healthcare proxy has a copy. Have that conversation with your children to say, you know what, I'm okay with this was my journey. Right. And when I get to this point, this is what I want. Right. Because then they're not left to guess. Does exactly. mom or dad want this or do I want this? Right. We've had that conversation when it's not a stressful, mm -hmm. high emotion time. It's around the dinner table. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I've always said to my kids, if I get hit by a bus, you know exactly what I want. Yeah. And they've known that since they were little kids. Right. You know, so to me, it, it wasn't a frightening thing. It was just like, these are all the things. I'm, it, and I had luckily a lot of people that guided me to make sure I did all those right things. And what a gift. Um, yeah. My mom recently passed away. I'm sorry. But we had most of the conversations. Yeah. I knew what she wanted, wanted and it was a gift to me. You know, so in families, and I know we talked a little bit about there's challenges. Some families don't want to talk about this. Right. Some families don't talk about that. And that's why someone like myself or having a workshop at the Councils on Aging, people hear from different people that aren't their family, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, I would never have thought to do that. Right. And I have goosebumps. It's exactly. a wonderful sharing so that it gives people the confidence to say, I can say this is my choice. Right. And that's the ultimate gift to both yourself as well as to your family, your friends, to say, this is my choice. This is yeah. my decision. Yeah. And so the more we can talk about it, yeah. have the conversations, yeah. it just helps. Oh, absolutely. And the last thing I want to bring up before I have you just kind of give your final thoughts is the financial implications of this and budgeting and, and funding. And everything costs money. Mm -hmm. And not everybody has the right insurance. And there's not a lot of places to live. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking more as you get older. Um, what, what do you hope, 
What component of that do you hope to succeed in when all this is said and done? Well, I'll go back to exactly where Cheryl left off. While there's not a money tree out back, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Planning mm -hmm. helps. But the biggest thing that you can give somebody that's absolutely free is empowerment, right? So to empower someone to lay the groundwork, mm -hmm. your community has resources, know them, mm -hmm. right? You're empowered. I don't have great insurance. I know this. I already know this about me. Mm -hmm. I'm worried. It's no different when we teach our kids. You have to save. There's a retirement in your future. Mm. You have to look at these variables. Kids go, oh no, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm gonna live. But they do. It does sink in. And just having the it, the power to talk, have these conversations, but to lay the groundwork. I don't know what the stock market's gonna do in 20 years. I don't know what health insurance my town's gonna offer in five. I do know what resources, though, if I do my homework and empower myself and my family to find them. That's a great community. That's a great family. That's perfect. And I'm going to say the Senior Center Councils on Aging are just a call away, an important resource. Um, if you need information, we're there. Um, we're a support in the community, and there's so much that's offered at a Senior Center. If you don't know, come on in. We're looking forward to seeing you. Mm -hmm. yes. That's awesome. Sure. The financial is, is worrisome, having just recently gone through you know, if you have a six week to 12 week wait, um, that's if you qualify, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you're paying fee for service, in our community, it's somewhere between $35 and $45 an hour with a minimum mm -hmm. of how many, maybe three or four per day, at least twice a week. So if you do that math, We've got we've we've got cause for concern, mm -hmm. right? And so, how do we, as a community, rally for everyone? Right. And I think that's what is most important: is the Council on Aging, you know, within each town, can help coordinate yeah. a little bit of the services. But really, it's about what Michelle said: educating yourself as to what are you going to possibly need, and does this town, does this place have this? And if not, how can we rally, and how can we provide this? I mean, there's a wonderful, wonderful model on Martha's Vineyard, of healthy Martha's Vineyard, and all the different towns kind of came together. Now, they're an island, right? Right. But the work that they all did to say, how do we do this here? And that's what I love about what's happening um, and, and the Councils on Aging, the board, the Senior Task Force, mm -hmm. the amount of people that are very interested in, in coordinating and collaborating. Mm. Um, and again, not just for seniors, right. but we are all, we hope, are going to get there. And, and I think um, one of the stats we were so surprised about here in Plymouth is that 40% of our population is over 50. Now by the year 2050 in the country, it's going to increase by 45%. Yeah. Like it's we are the growing population, that's yeah. for sure. And the yeah. other statistic is there's more people 60 and older than 18 and younger. Mm -hmm. So even if you think a workforce and yeah. what's coming down the pike, we have to look at aging a little differently, knowing right. that our workforce is much smaller than that aging population. Right. Absolutely. So a lot of planning needs to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've obviously started this and it's it's really, I mean, I didn't really know much about this. It is so exciting to hear this. What if people want to ask questions or get involved or make suggestions or, or just contact you as a group and say, hey, I watched the show. It made me think, what about this? How do people get in touch? What do they do? Do they go to each individual council on aging or do they uh, talk to the senior task force? What's the best way to do it? I think either. You yeah. can call okay. your own senior center. Um, to reach out or if you have a question, you know, give one of the other senior centers in the region a call. We really try to work collaboratively to help each other out. Yeah. Um, it's nice that we're both working on the age and dementia friendly process. It will be great to see what both of our um, action plans look like at the end. Um, it's wonderful because you'll be able to marry resources in your town with this action plan so you can move those initiatives forward. Got it. 
And we have some community forums coming up where we really... Yeah. yeah, so part of the Agent Dementia Friendly Process for Plymouth right now, we have four of them where we want people of all ages to come out, ask the questions, express your concerns. Maybe it's not just concerns. Maybe you actually have something to contribute. Right. Right. So we're not just looking to tell you, you know, how it should yeah. be. We want to hear from you everything. So those four community forums, um, they can call Cal. Um, I can gladly give them. They'll be publicized on our town website. Mm -hmm. And we'll put all the information on the, Great. On the, Thank you. At yes. the end of the show, yeah, of ways to get in touch. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah. Final thoughts? I'll go you, you, and then Cheryl. What, what's your one takeaway? If, if, if you took nothing else away from watching this, what, what do you want people to think about? I want you to think about how important your community is to you and the resources in your community. No matter what your age, you're going to need resources in your community. And if the people who work in your community are rooting for you, reach out to us. As Joanne said, COAs, Cal, we have so many options and so many pieces of information mm. that you might need. And if we don't have the answer, we are the super highway of information. <laughs> right. You're find it. We yeah. will find oh, yeah. it for we know you. That. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, yeah. Joanne. Uh, planning. I think the key is planning um, so you have a, a <laughs> wonderful future. Um, it's not going to be an easy road, um, but if you take some of the guesswork out of it, it will be easier for you and your family. Um, we just had a program the other day, and one woman said she had a binder, and it had different things that mom just said, and all the papers were in this binder. It wasn't pretty. But what a gift to your family when you find this binder and you find a funny card that she sent you or left behind for you. It's a gift. Yeah. So planning is a gift. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, final thoughts here. Final. Final for me would be really because of National Healthcare Decisions Day is to take that time to think about what your decisions um, might be should something happen or, you know, you're already in the process of something that... that you're going to have to make some plans for, so the planning part, but really to start with some of those those important documents. Mm. So healthcare proxy, yep. right? And that is, you know, who can act on your behalf because they know your wishes. That's why I said at the beginning, what are your wishes, right? Um, and then there's some other advanced directives, like a living will. Mm -hmm. What are your personal decisions? It's not legally binding, um, but it really gives the story of what you might want. Um, HIPAA forms, right? 18 and up, your kids go to college, yep. you can't talk to a doctor or, or a nurse for all of us. Yeah. Who can call the hospital and get some information? So HIPAA forms are really important. Right. Who do you want to get your information? Durable power of attorney is another. And then really for serious illness is a most form. And so that's medical orders for life-sustaining treatment. And certainly should you have a serious illness, mm -hmm. you want to talk to your healthcare provider and have some of these conversations so that you, your choices mm -hmm. that you talked about um, are really um, able to be done and right. honored for you. Right. Um, so there's some tactical things, yep. and then there's some personal things. But the tactical ones are very important to, to get, get those done first, as right. soon as you can. Right. And we've only really touched the tip of the iceberg here mm -hmm. today, because mm -hmm. there's so much more. And yeah. we'd love to have you back to find out a little bit down the road, how has this gone, and what's a, what are the next steps, sure. and how can we get involved, and how can people, and I hope people heed what you've said today, because it's really not hard hard things to do. No. Uh, the conversations can be hard. Very, very But the hard. paperwork is, is the paperwork, mm -hmm. right? It's, uh, it's getting, getting, getting started on it. Um, I can't thank you all enough. This has been really wonderful. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you thank for you. having yeah. us today. Yeah. This and, was and awesome. Joanne and Michelle, yeah, this has been you. wonderful. We'll do it again. Uh, this is Julie Thompson for PAC TV. Till next time.
If you've enjoyed this video by The Local Scene, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.